Well, good evening. Thank you. My name is Ali Rafaju. I'm a family physician in the local area. I'm originally from Iran. I grew up in the south of France, and I've been here since high school, a small little Christian school in Newport. College of Medical School at UC Irvine, did one year of general surgery. They said I talked too much to people, so I retrained as a family doc. And as family docs, we get to know people. Everyone's connected, emotionally, mentally, physically, and sometimes care becomes piecemeal. You have a left toe surgeon, a right ear specialist. No one knows the patient, or actually the human being behind the patient. So tonight, I want to talk about an alternative perspective on mental illness, not necessarily as an illness, but as a chemical imbalance. So in one form or another, the talk tonight is going to impact you guys either directly or someone you know or you care about. The point is to empower you to help somebody else who needs treatment or management or to address this chemical imbalance and also to empower the clinicians out there to take time in a busy schedule just to even broach the subject. It's not necessarily time-consuming or touchy-feely. It's necessary, especially given all the tragic events locally or nationally, actually. And even this week, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommended that every 12-year-old during their physical undergo at least a questionnaire on depression. So this is the talk I give. Um, I call it the spiel, uh, at least 10 times a day. Here it goes. And by the way, these names are generic. There's no Mr. Smith or Mrs. Jones sitting here. Mr. Smith, Mrs. Jones, you're born with a chemical imbalance in your brain. It's in one of the brain chemicals, dopamine, serotonin, norepinephrine. This imbalance predisposes you to anxiety or depression as a medical disorder. The extremes of which are very visible. Some people pace around the table talking a miles an hour. Some people are so depressed they don't get off the couch for a month. Most people, they're not at the extremes. They're kind of in the middle. They have a little bit of this, a little bit of that. They may be a little obsessive compulsive, a little ADD-ish. I don't give it a term, it's chemical. Something happens and they tilt over. They start having physical signs of this chemical imbalance, such as, Dr. Raffigio, I sleep too much, sleep too little, eat too much, eat too little. I'm edgy, anxious, little stuff just gets under my skin. I'm always thinking about stuff, permutations or permutations or permutations. I'm down, even on the weekends, doc, I can't relax, or just things are not fun anymore. I get distracted easily. What's wrong with me? So it's chemical, it's physical. The third part is genetic, it runs in the family. Except 40, 50 years ago, there was no term for it. Uncle Joe, he's Henri, and Jenny is a crab. Or they self-medicate. Doc, I get into it with the boss, I gotta go out for a smoke. <laughs> I'm down, I'm depressed, line of cocaine, I'm on top of the world. <laughs> so, a lot of people who misuse substances are self-treating this chemical chaos. Let's find another condition with these components. Example, diabetes. Mr. Jones, you're diabetic. No. You're diabetic. No, Dr. Raffigio, I'm gonna to go to the nutritionist. I'm gonna shake this. Okay, buddy, you're gonna be back in two months. I gotta give you insulin. So this chemical imbalance, like diabetes, except diabetes, very easy. I suck your blood, look at the lab report. Mr. Jones, sugar bad. If you break your leg, people see it. Oh, look at the cast on the poor person's leg. With the chemicals of the brain, there's nothing visibly wrong with people. If anything, people are like, hey, wait, what's the matter with you, man? Snap out of it. Cheer up, chill out. What do you have to worry about? Why can't you focus? So I tell him it's almost as ridiculous as telling a diabetic, what's the matter with you? Make more insulin. <laughs> you can't. So I tell him, it's not a sign of weakness. You're not crazy needing a happy pill. This is your diabetes. Diabetes, insulin, chemical imbalance, Prozac. <laughs> but the term doesn't matter. It's chemical. There's three parts to it. So one is chemical, one is situational. Life, ups and downs, school, midterm, graduation, college, life. And the third part, mainly in women, is hormonal. But doc, one week during the month, I'm gonna claw somebody's eyes out and I just don't know why. <laughs> Mrs. Jones, I can stop your period, you can win the lottery, you can go to Tahiti, you're still gonna have this. 
So more often than not, there's no cause for it, and you can't fix it. Doc, only if my wife didn't travel so much, I'd feel better. Gosh, when the kids grow up and go to college, I'll be fine. Only if I had a bigger car. God, if the boss didn't bug me. If the teacher only would listen to what I have to say. No, no, no. There's no cause for it, and you can't fix it. So I tell patients that they walk around with two monkeys on their shoulder. One is they have to deal with this chemical pressure, this weight, and the second monkey is they have to put up a good front. There's someone's friend, there's someone's cousin, there's someone's neighbor. And just putting up a good front by the end of the day drains them. So what people do, without much luck, is they use their intellect to battle something that's chemical. They use their brain power to battle something at least that's partially chemical. And guess what? It doesn't work. Nor do you need to do that. Yes, Mr. Smith, if you're diabetic, you need insulin forever. With the chemicals of the mind, after six months or a year, you may not need it. No, Mrs. Jones, if you and I decide to go on a medication, it's not going to take away your business edge or make you a zombie. It's going to make you you without the extra. Because as people sit in my room, half of them is inside their own head cheering up, trying to focus, worrying about stuff. The other half is paying attention to me, paying attention in class, enjoying life. As this takes more brain energy, it encroaches upon the other side. To start forgetting things. It gets harder and harder just to be them. Some of the other examples I give patients is like, hey, listen, if a car comes, runs over my foot, kills my dog, I'll totally get depressed. What if I get depressed for no reason? I'm a fairly bright guy. I'm going to start thinking, is it because of this, is it because of that? What if there isn't? It's free-floating depression looking for a reason. Someone comes here with a gun, I'll get anxious, jump and hide. What if I get anxiety for no reason? Again, I'd like to think I'm a fairly bright guy. I'm going to start thinking, is it because of this, is it because of that? What if there isn't? It's free-floating anxiety looking for a reason. The other thing I tell patients is, whether they see a psychiatrist or their doctor or when they get on medication, I don't want them to just get better. I want them to be well. So many people, they just get better and they scurry down life. They're like, oh, as long as I wasn't as bad as I was, I'm not getting those panic attacks. It's fine, doc. I don't want to get better. I'm better, I'm, I don't want to get well. So, the chemicals of the brain is no different than any other condition. It needs to be monitored, it needs to be adjusted. And whether they see their doctor or they talk to a counselor, which actually both needs to happen, the need for the medication changes over time. What I compare it to is Thyroid. You have a gland here, it's thyroid. Secretes the thyroid hormone, regulates a lot of body function. Let's say your thyroid doesn't work. If I give you thyroid medication, am I really giving you a pill? Or am I replenishing what your body doesn't make? So, this is what I wanted to talk about as far as the alternative perspective on the chemicals of the brain. And to encourage and empower everyone to either get involved themselves or help somebody else that you care about, that you know about, who's going through the physical manifestation of this chemical imbalance, get the help they need. Again, when I talk about the thyroid and replenishing it, what I tell patient is, you really don't have anything to flaunt. Oh, look, I'm taking happy pills. <laughs> and nothing to hide. It's merely replenishing what your body doesn't make. Thank you.